Okay, good morning, everybody. We'll start the event now, and uh, the event is being recorded so that we can share this out via our YouTube channels afterwards and record all of this fantastic content that our speakers are going to share with us today. So thank you for joining us. This is uh, the event called Demystifying the Business Support Landscape. And certainly yesterday at the Global Trade Conference, this was promoted by the Minister for Exports, Graeme Stewart MP, as a way of uh, businesses being able to understand what support is out there for them through their, their local chambers and their local um, LEP as well, and Growth Hub. So if we can move on, Grace, we'll start with um, giving a very brief introduction to who you're going to hear from this morning. And we're going to start with Pete West, who is the International Trade Advisor for the Department for International Trade. We deliver that program here at the uh, Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce. And I will give a further introduction for Pete because you will hear from Pete firstly this morning. Then we've got Mark Burkett. Mark is the Export Academy Trade Advisor for all Greater Birmingham and Solihull Hall area. It's fair to say that if you're not within that area, there are also Export Academy Trade Advisors too. And so the content that Mark shares with you will be relevant to you uh, for wherever you are based. We then have Sunny Clare. Sunny is the Innovation and Growth Specialist uh, at Innovate UK Edge, uh, based here at the Chamber. And Sunny will be able to give you great insight there onto the support that the team here will be able to provide for you. And then it will be Charlotte Bowden. And Charlotte is the Growth Hub Account Manager, Growth and Resilience at the Greater Birmingham and Solihull Local Enterprise Partnership. And Charlotte will be able to share how she will be able to help uh, local businesses too. So I'm going to hand over to you, Pete. But before I do, I'm just going to give a little brief resume of Pete's bio for those of you that haven't managed to see on our web page. So Pete has 15 years experience assisting West Midlands based companies to grow their business through international trade. He's a qualified automotive engineer with 10 years experience in manufacturing and business process improvement at all levels of OEM and tier one supply. And Pete has worked in places such as MG Rover, Jaguar Land Rover and the London Taxi Company. Pete is the automotive sector lead for Department of International Trade in the West Midlands and he is the lead contact for advanced engineering inquiries in the Birmingham area. Pete is an extremely busy international trade advisor with an absolute wealth of experience. So really pleased that Pete has been able to spare the time this morning to share with us his insight on how international trade advisors are able to support business and the opportunities for businesses out there. So Pete, over to you. Thank you, Mandy. Good morning all. Um, lovely, lovely to be able to, uh, to speak with you this morning. Um, and I hope I live up to the uh, the introduction from Mandy. Um, my details are on the on, on the uh, on the screen for you now. If you need to get in touch with me after after the event, um, so next slide, please, Grace. Thank you. So yes, good morning, all. Um, Pete West, International Trade Advisor for the Department for International Trade. Now, for those that don't know what DIT does. And we are a government organisation and we basically promote trade uh, from the UK um, through exports and also responsible for inward investment. But inward investment being particularly focused at the moment with regards to post-Brexit and the new free trade agreements. So there's, there's three basic areas um, within, within the Department for International Trade and that's UK Export Finance, which is the, the arm that helps with financing and um, guaranteeing payments for exporters. There's our policy departments, and then there's us based at international trade and investment. Worldwide, there's almost two and a half thousand staff who are based in all of the British embassies, commissions and consulates around the world. Now, obviously we have trade advisors in each of the nine UK regions here to support local UK businesses. Our teams overseas do exactly the same 
job as we do, but they're obviously based on the ground in the countries that you are, or maybe looking to trade in. So it helps make that connection and that initial stage of exporting just that little bit easier because we have teams of specialists. They're all locals. So uh, they're normally headed up by a um, senior civil servant, but they'll all have um, business experience in their local country to them, their, their national country. And of course, they all speak the same language as the country you are looking at. So it helps to make things a little bit easier. Next slide, please, Grace. So basically, what do you need in order to become um, uh, you know, a successful exporter? Now, obviously, you need, you need something with genuine export potential, but what does that actually mean? So you really need to think about whether or not, if, if you're looking at a particular country, the country you're looking at, does what, do they actually sell already what, what you do, the service or the, the product that you make? Is it, is it currently available? If so, do you understand what the competition are doing? Um, and you know, do they have what what are their similar needs to the UK market? And this is this is really um, a question that should be asked well before talking to us, because what what you really need to understand is from from your own perspective, really, is when you when you think about the UK market, you might have been spent, you might have spent the last 10 years developing the UK market and you may have 5% coverage in the UK market. Many companies, many countries outside of the UK are far bigger than us, um, but they're, they're far more difficult to deal with. So if you've spent 10 years developing the UK market, realistically, how long is it going to take you to ex extend and expand your product in an overseas market so you really need to to think about your expectation levels and what you can actually achieve um, the, the biggest thing you need of course is you need resource in, in time uh, and, and your budget you need to invest those things within within your company to be able to this doesn't come for free you need to be able to you know look look at the investment both in your time and your resources to do this um, next slide, please, Grace. Um, there are key mistakes. I'm not going to stand here and say that, you know, I'm not going to sit here today and talk to you and, and tell you that exporting is easy because really it isn't. Um, and there are some key mistakes. I'm not going to read them all out to you. And one of the key, one of the key issues that we find is around agents and distributor agreements. Is it, it can be a key issue, um, particularly for companies that go overseas and will do um, a trade show. They're going to approach a trade show stand with somebody that says, I can be your agent in this market. Lots of companies then will take the opportunity because it's a, a fairly cost-effective way of finding a local representative. If you don't have the correct agent or distributor agreement in place, it can be more costly after the event. I, would work, I was working with a company a few years ago that did exactly this. They, they, signed, they signed an agent from a trade show, um, the, the agent wasn't particularly great. So they then decided that they needed to cancel the, the contract to move on. The agent said, that's fine. Um, they agreed that they, there was commission payable. So the company said to the agent, just send me, your, send me your invoice and we'll pay the commission and we'll move on. So the commission value was 4,000 euros. The company got an invoice with a solicitor's letter for 20,000 euros because the agent was claiming for the next five years for loss of earnings and what potentially could have earned. Now, because they hadn't signed a proper agent agreement, the company settled out of court and they settled for 12,000 euros in the end. So you really need to make sure that you get the right kind of... Um, support and advice before you before you go over before you go overseas and try and do it on it. What I what I don't want you to do is to think it's easy, attempt to do it on your own and get it wrong. Talk to us, it's what we're here for. Um, next slide please, Grace. Obviously there are key barriers. I've said it's not it's not very easy, um, but there are some key barriers. Brexit has not made any of these any easier. I have to be honest. So Please talk to us if you are considering exporting, whether you are new to an export market 
or even now if you want to, if you are currently exporting but wish to grow your export market, talk to us, pick up the phone, give us a call, let us help you because we, we want to make sure that when you do these things, you're doing them properly. Um, like I say, the, the, the issues around import and export regulations have become far more um, important and yet complicated since we've left the European Union. Between DIT and the Chambers of Commerce locally, we can help you overcome some of these some of these issues. Um, currently, for those exporting at the moment, if you are having issues around understanding VAT or understanding the import and export criteria, there is a, a current government grant available through the industry to the Institute of Export for two thousand pounds. You can get a £2,000 grant for either training um, or for some consultants cover consultancy costs to help you better understand some of the issues you may be facing around regulations post-Brexit. So get in touch with that and we can put you in touch with the IOE as well for, for that. And all of those things basically mean that, you know, when you start exporting or you want to grow your export, exporting is a risk to your business for all of the reasons highlighted on this slide exporting is a risk however and i don't wish to sound like a second-hand car salesman when i talk about this but you can do three things with the risk you can ignore it which is just daft you can insure against it which can be very very expensive or you can manage it the department for international trade and all of our uh, associated support services are here to help you manage the risks associated with international trade that's what we're here that's what we're here for and that's what we do so please talk to us before you decide to to to, to, to go any further with doing any international trade but it's not all bad it's not you know all is not lost you know next slide please grace so this is the crux this 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 slide basically describes the crux of what we do and how we can help UK businesses within their export journey. So as trade advisors, we can come out, we will, we will come and visit you or, you know, Zoom calls at the moment because we're not allowed to go anywhere yet. And we can, we can help you develop your export strategy. We'll understand you and your business. What is it you want to achieve? What are your key targets? What are your aspirations? We can then help you to develop an agreed export strategy that suits both you, your timing and your budgets and what you're trying to achieve. We can help you understand how best to select your required overseas market, which a lot of companies say, I know my products can be sold overseas, I just don't know where. So how do you decide which country to start selling to and why? We can, we can help you select the correct overseas markets. We can help you design your market research program because market research is key. The three, the three most important things about international trade are research, research, and research. The frustrating thing comes, and I will tell you this up front, is that you may start out looking at international trade with and having three key questions that you want to answer. When you answer that, when you do your research and answer those three questions, you will end up with six more questions. And when you answer those six questions, you will, end, you will end up with more questions. And the more you understand, the more questions you end up asking. And that's not a bad thing. Because the more you ask, the more you understand. The more you understand, the easier you can manage your risks. We can help you obviously look at what, what is your strategy for, for getting into an overseas market. Clearly, you know the way you, you do trade in the UK. Do you want to replicate that trading model in an overseas market or do you need through market um there might be market uh, blockers that, that, that say to you you need to have an in-market representative you need to have a company in the uae in the middle east saudi arabia for example you have to have a company set up that's 51 percent owned by a saudi person is that something that is you're comfortable with so it's all of these questions that you you need to ask and then we look at going from the strategy and the planning side to then thinking about, so what do we do next? So is my website, I mean, the, 
the internet makes the world a very, very small place. So is my, is my website actually, is it suitable for overseas markets? If I want to sell in France, if somebody, will somebody in France be able to find my website? Will they understand what I'm selling when they get to my website? <clears throat> so there are, there are lots of support areas through our digital trade advisors who can do, do a review of your current website and, and give you, and this is all, a, again, it's all free service. We are a free, free provider. So for, for, for no charge, you can have a, a, a website review that will tell you what you need to do to make improvements on your website. That will be fed back to you. And we will also feed that back to your, your web development team at the same time, if you wish, um, so that they can understand what needs to be done. We also have a language and culture advisor who is also extremely useful. Once you've had uh, um, your website review, you should really think about a cultural review as well. And people don't take this that seriously. And this is a major downfall within the UK, I believe, because we should. Um, we, For example, we did a website review for a company recently that was a sole trader and described himself on his website as a one-man band. Now, in the UK, a one-man band is somebody that trades on his own. In Germany, they picture a man with a bass drum, a guitar, a harmonica, cymbals on his knees, bells on his toes, and that's what they mean by a one-man band. So what are you saying? Does that actually translate to overseas markets? That is crucial. Yesterday, I was talking to a company that does vape e-liquids for vape cigarettes, of e-cigarettes. One of their descriptors is their flavors is tobacco so they call it tobacco juice now tobacco juice when you look at what does that mean in overseas markets in a couple of markets tobacco juice is actually the spit that's produced from chewing tobacco back when cowboys used to chew it in the late 19th century so what what are you saying on your website does it translate it is vitally important that what you are trying to sell comes across because you can spend all the time and money in the world developing a website, traveling overseas, talking to people. If your website doesn't sell what you're trying to sell, you are not going to sell it. So we need that is again. And also similarly with intellectual property. I mean, Sonny's going to talk later about innovation and IPR and protecting your intellectual property is of paramount importance. We have specialist advisors who can help you understand what your IPR is within your business and to help you protect it. That same advisor can also help with agents and distributor agreements. So we have a set of bog standard agreements that are suitable. Um, similarly, he will look at your current agreements if you are currently exporting and make sure that your current agreements are in place. What this does from your perspective as a business is it allows you then to take your agreements rather than asking a solicitor to write an agreement which will cost thousands you then take the written agreement and just ask them to ratify it which will cost you a couple you know 100 pounds so it's much cheaper to work with us because you use our free service to do that clearly the most important thing that uk businesses want to know when they're trading overseas am i going to get paid how do i guarantee i'm going to get paid now, this is where I spoke about UK export finance at the beginning. UK export finance can come in and help you um, sort out ways to ensure that you're going to get paid. And there are a, there are a myriad of ways. And I'm not don't want to go into too much detail now, but we guarantee you get paid. The one thing that is in par of paramount importance here, if you can guarantee you are going to get paid, then maybe that allows you to extend your payment terms to your customers. And you may be able to offer 60 to 90 day payment terms where your competition are only offering 30. That can be the difference between you winning or losing the contract. So it's important and really important to understand about getting paid. And obviously one of the, other, the areas we support is we do market visits and we support trade missions overseas. And which leads me on to my final point. We do have currently um, for those companies looking to, to, to grow their export markets at the moment, we do have an ESIF grant available. Um, there is uh, a number of, as you would expect with, 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 with public funding, there's a number of hoops to jump through. But if you are currently uh, 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 an exporter, 
uh, with a high export potential, working with the DIT team and um, looking to either, you know, do any changes to your website or go make an overseas missions, then we can help you with a little bit of funding. Um, so yeah, get in touch and we can discuss that in more detail because every case is different. So as long as you're an SME and you are working with DIT, there's a potential to be able to support this funding. Um, so, so that's it from me really from a DIT perspective. The, me the message I want to get across plain and simply is let us, you know, I said, we can help, let us help. Please don't try it on your own and get it wrong. Use us, that's what we're here for. And um, yeah, I hope to speak to some of you in the near future. Thank you. Thanks, Pete. Such valuable information there. And what I really um, liked about your presentation was it's not just about the support that you personally give as an international trade advisor, but it's all the add-ons that you have as well, like the digital advisor, the language and culture advisor as well. And as Pete said, this is all free of charge support. So please reach out to us because again, it doesn't matter where you are based, there will be a trade advisor and this support available to you and we can signpost you to the right people. Also good to hear about the funding opportunities because that's the, the great thing about this presentation today. We wanna to make sure that you understand what's available to you, what's out there, what's gonna be helpful for your business. And the, the £2,000 grant that's available through the Institute of Export is really useful. We've seen many businesses picking this up now and in particular for training, which of course we do also deliver here at the Chamber. Um, and also we have seen people take advantage of the ESIF grant for translation services here at the Chamber as well. Another great example. And good to hear your um, case studies, Pete, as well, because it's so important that we hear these real life stories and the issues because we all want to learn from them. So thank you very much for all of that insight there. And yes, you can reach out to Pete afterwards and ask any questions and his contact details will be available after. So next in line, we've now got Mark Burkitt. Uh, and Mark is from the Export Academy. He's a trade advisor for all of the Greater Birmingham and Solihull area. Um, but yeah, the support is on offer um, throughout, wherever you're based. Mark has worked with UK companies in the export department for over 30 years. You don't look old enough for that, Mark. Um, and initially within a Unilever company and then for the past 20 years running his own businesses as well. So he's gained a wealth of experience in the export field and Mark is well qualified to offer um, practical insight into the best way to operate overseas. Mark's experience makes him well qualified to understand the workings of getting goods and services to the world market. Um, he works across all sectors and will draw upon his uh, colleagues' strengths as well in specific markets when required, because we all work together as a team, which is, is great for whichever business that uh, links up with you. But Mark's particular field of expertise is within the food industry. But as mentioned previously, there is definite synergy across all markets. So we're gonna hear about that, Mark, and uh, over to you. Okay, well, thank you for your uh, kind comments there, Mandy, the checks in the post. Um, welcome, uh, everybody. Uh, good morning to you all. Um, yes, as Mandy pointed out, I'm the Export Academy Advisor for um, Greater Birmingham and Solihull. And we work, as um, Mandy says, we work across all sectors. Um, it's, not, uh, it's not something that is specific just to the food, and, uh, food industry with myself. We, uh, we deal with right the way across the whole um, range of sectors in the um, in the Birmingham and, and Solihull area. Um, in terms of what we uh, can offer, the Exports Academy, um, as a, a, a sector of the DIT, it's a national programme which covers the Midlands, Northern Powerhouse, um, and the southwest of England. And its purpose is to give small and micro businesses. So that's the smaller end of the sector where um, Pete comes in with the larger companies. We deal with small, in some instances, um, kitchen table businesses and we give them the tools and the confidence to sell around the world just my uh, screen here for you there we are. 
Um, there we are. So it says uh, there that just spells that out that we work with SMEs and give them the tools and, and the uh, the confidence. In terms of um, our, our purpose in, in Birmingham is to um, to really to, to, to go against this um, research that the DIT suggests that um, businesses don't have, they don't feel, that they feel as though they could export, but they don't have the confidence or the level of knowledge to do so. And we aim to address that problem in terms of the uncertainty. Exports, I mean, not to go against what Pete said, because he's quite right that exports isn't easy, but it's like anything. If you know what you're doing and you've got a knowledge about it, it makes that those problems and those hurdles less of a problem they are you know surmountable we can get over things um, and we aim to give businesses the tool and tools and confidence to do that and to take the advantage um, of the new opportunities Pete mentioned there about the world being a small place and indeed it is now and we give them the advantage of or give them the help to take advantage rather of those new opportunities from around the world so we were launched the Exports Academy was launched by the DIT to give new novice and inexperienced exporters that's the skill set and the knowledge set and the confidence to start selling either goods or services to customers around the world in terms of um inexperience what we mean by that is some companies have limited experience of exports and in some cases sadly they have bad experience of export which um can sometimes put people well in, in fact in most cases it puts people off people send their goods or they try and sell the services abroad and they come unstuck and that could be for a whole um, range of, of different reasons. This slide gives you the, the journey. We think of the export process as a journey. It's the easiest way for clients to understand it, I guess. And here we are with the road, and this is it's a long and winding road. And what we do is we give them the knowledge along the way to overcome the hurdles and the barriers. And in some cases, it seems insurmountable, but they, they very rarely are. Um, we can give them the, the uh, intelligence and knowledge and the experience to, to push forward and, and create an export business for themselves. My experience personally, um, I've been, as Mandy said, I've been in export for the 30 odd years. And I think one of the biggest things um, that sort of helps me is I have a tremendous um, experience in, sometimes you have somebody on the far side of the world who asks for your products, and that's a great situation to be in, but not always, it's not always a straight path. And I think one of the greatest achievements is that when you can actually get your, your goods out of your warehouse across by sea or by air or by whatever method of transport you use and actually get the notification back from your client that they've received the goods, they're in good order. And, you know, a sale isn't a sale until it's paid for. And that's it's a real experience and it's it's really worth pursuing. People are put off by exports. It, in my early days, it was all smoke and mirrors, and it was like a magic act to get goods across the other side of the world. People, most people in within Unilever, would you believe, didn't want to understand how we actually got the goods from where we were over to, say, Australia or somewhere down in South America. But it was their loss, really, because it, it really is a great way of working. And when you can deal with someone whose language isn't English as the first choice or the first use of language, it's a tremendous experience to do to exports and I've got a real enthusiasm for it. And I hope that comes across to my clients. We use that, you know, I use it as one of my um, plus points, I think, when I'm discussing it with clients that don't be put off. It's Yes, it's not easy, but few things in life are worth doing when they're really easy. So, you know, people should remember that. As an advisor, we work with businesses in the early stages of the export journey. Um, what we work out is when we sit down with them, we ask various questions, and we come up with the diagnostics and an action plan of the way forward. A lot of the time, as I said, a lot of even just the acronyms that are used within export can confuse people. I had a lady the other day and she was really flustered by someone had referred to C CDG and she couldn't understand what CDG was. And obviously straight away, because of my experience, I knew what it was. It's Charles de Gaulle Airport. It was stuck in Charles, their product was stuck in Charles de Gaulle Airport. She couldn't understand it. So that's a level of some of the things that people see it and that it just the red mist descends and they just don't know what they're, what, what they're, what they're dealing with. Anyway, once we've completed that, we then um, request the customers to sign on and register with the um, Exports Academy webinars and training workshops. And what we do here is, and it's a specific to the West Midlands, we're now trialing two half day workshops instead of spreading them out over a period of time, which could be eight or 10 weeks. We now have two half day sessions, which in terms of 
people's commitment. We'll never invoice them. We never send them a bill because this all, all we offer is free of charge. All we ask for is a commitment. And I know that time for all of us is a rare commodity. But if they put the time in, I'm sure they'll get the benefits of it coming out. When we get um, clients that we think um, need specialist advice, we then can refer them to specialist advisors for further support during this period of time. Export ready companies have access to the DIT led campaigns um, and events, which will then further their export interest and knowledge. And then once they've graduated from us, and it's important that it's put over this way, they go, people go through the Export Academy and then we pass them across to Pete and his colleagues in the international trade team. And they then will move them forward um, to further advance them once they get to that stage. Um, they account manage them, support companies towards the latter stages of that export journey. And that's what it is, it's a journey. Next. Um, we carry out um, a series of educational webinars which are led by export experts from the DIT and topics that, that are included there, e-commerce, pricing strategies, um, international marketing, the benefits of free trade agreements um, and export controls, of course. Then later on, we offer educational events, independent learning um, and refer referrals, as I say, to the specialist advisors and uh, the cluster advisors. And they will help them with, as Pete mentioned before, things such as intellectual property, communications, trade. Um, one of the biggest things, and Pete touched upon it before, in terms of um, appointing agents, one of the things that a lot of people don't understand or, or take on board is when they appoint agents, the purpose of an agent is to, to, to really sell your business in that specific region. And a lot of the time, some people don't realize this, an agent could be there as a business blocker. I call them, I refer to them as business blockers. They say, oh, yes, we'll represent you. We'll do this, we'll do that. They promise them the air. But at the same time, they're already representing another company that has similar products or similar services. And they'll use them instead. And basically what it does is it blocks people off from that particular area. It's a thing to, to be mindful of. And we touch upon that in the webinars as well as the benefits of appointing um, agents and distributors. As you can see here from the support they get from uh, international trade advisors and opportunities to work with other businesses that have global ambitions as well. Pete touched upon it. We all learn from each other. And I think that's one thing that we need to remember. It's important to also understand that exports is about humans and about, you know, we're all human people and you have to understand how their culture is, what they, what things are important to them. You have to tick the right boxes. It's like life. It's like building a relationship with anyone um, in normal life. You have to build relationships with people for export. And that's, I think, the way um, we sort of encourage people to do that during the webinars. We encourage that in the workshops. The workshops tend to be more one to few uh, events where you've got maybe 10 different people on there. They're more interactive and we encourage the interaction of uh, people that attend. Uh, move on here. As I say here, we've got market research, um, exporting products to markets, international markets and strategy and pitching and winning business internationally. This is on a more, as I said, a one to few scale um, where you can be more interactive. You can ask questions as they arrive and you'll certainly get the right answers back or you'll get a follow up where the one to one business support at the end, they can give that one to one business support following the workshop. Um, to, uh, to encourage that. As Mandy pointed out, we're not alone. I'm not, you know, Birmingham, uh, whilst it is the center of my universe, there are other places around in the West Midlands and we've got international trade teams for the, uh, the regions that I have on the screen there. Sector advisors, which it's not exhausted this list. It, it goes on food and drink right the way through to tech and digital. Obviously Birmingham with its, its great history of industry and manufacturing, um, we're strong in, in Birmingham and Solihull in terms of that, but we have advisors that can, recently we've had workshops with one-to-ones with tax advisors and with international logistics advisors, which is obviously, you may have a great product and it might be fantastic and at the right price, but how are you gonna get it there? And these guys can help you to, uh, to determine that as well. So there's the details, Herefordshire and Worcestershire, Shropshire, Coventry and Warwickshire, my own patch of Birmingham and Solihull, Black Country and Staffordshire. Basically we cover the whole of the West Midlands and I hope it's come across in the presentation that whilst I'm not a native of the West Midlands, I am fiercely proud of the area that we work for. And I think one of the things about working for, um, for, for Birmingham and Solihull is that it, it is, it's got a great history. I'm a great historian. I like my history. And um, we should be proud of being British. And I think that's what we need to do and really push on and 
take advantage of, of the situation in the world as it is right now. We're coming out of COVID, hopefully, and we need to push on and uh, hopefully together we can, we can build a Great Britain. It's good. Thanks, Mandy. Thanks, Mark. And really good to hear about all the additional support through the Export Academy. And I think that the key message here is whatever your shape or size, there is a, an advisor here for international trade um, delivering the programme through the Department of International Trade, which um, hasn't previously been the case. So uh, even if you, you are small, like you say, your kitchen table companies, Mark, there is somebody here that is able to help you to expand and to scale up that business into the international market. So please do reach out to us there. Thank you for that. And the workshops as well. We've had some great stories coming through of people that have been on a variety of workshops. And just to reiterate what both Pete and Mark have said, this is free of charge free of charge workshops. So it's just your time, but just think of all the valuable content that you will get out of it. So please do get in touch afterwards for that. Right, now I know that we've, uh, we've, we're running slightly behind, but it's fine because I wanna make sure that all of this content is shared and of course it will be uploaded. So I'm now going to introduce uh, Sunny Claire. Sunny um, is an innovation and growth specialist at Innovate UK Edge, and that programme is delivered uh, by the Chamber as well. Sunny has extensive experience and expertise in providing business to, uh, support to SMEs across the region uh, on key areas surrounding intellectual property, as Peter's mentioned earlier, accessing funding and finance, which we all like, and developing commercial strategies identifying routes to market again, product conformity and regulations and entering new international markets. Sunny, uh, having spent over 10 years at the Birmingham Chamber of Commerce, has a wealth of experience in delivering a number of European and UK government funded programmes, including Erasmus for Young Entrepreneurs, Europe Direct Information Centre and Enterprise Europe Network. And I know that Sunny is working on a variety of programmes right now of um, entrepreneurs and mentoring, um, young innovators, etc. And again, with Sunny, um, doesn't matter where you're based, there will be an advisor that can help you wherever you are. So Sunny, I'm going to hand over to you now for your presentation. Thank you. That's great, Mandy. I appreciate the kind words. Um, good morning, everybody. Uh, pleased to have the opportunity to present uh, Innovate UK Edge. Um, as Mandy mentioned, I'm one of the innovation and growth specialists. Um, Innovate UK Edge was, was launched in, in January earlier this year uh, and builds upon the support previously provided by the Enterprise Europe Network. Um, based within the international uh, team at the Birmingham Chamber of Commerce. We work with businesses across the West Midlands region. Some of you may be aware um, of Innovate UK support for businesses that are innovating with research and development grant funding. Innovate UK Edge is, is a key part of Innovate UK's wraparound support for SMEs, which goes beyond um, just funding alone. Uh, essentially, our support is available for innovative businesses that are developing new products, uh, services, um, and we cover the whole of the, the West Midlands region. Next slide, please. EEN, um, if you can go to the next slide, please. Um, EEN is the European Commission's main business support network. Um, it is the largest business support network in Europe for small and medium sized businesses. Today, it is a network consisting of around 600 uh, partner organizations, which includes chambers of commerce, uh, universities, innovation centers. And through this network, we co-organize a number of uh, brokerage events and company missions. Uh, and have access to um, a partnership tool where businesses can find overseas R&D and commercial partners. If you were previously aware of the support delivered by EEN here in the UK, um, that has now all merged into Innovate UK Edge. 
Next slide, please. We, we recognize that businesses uh, go through these three main stages um, and our support aims to address each of these specific stages from providing information and advice at the early stage to supporting businesses with implementing, as Pete and uh, Mark have mentioned, with regards to intellectual property strategies, access to markets and investment at growth stage, to access to networks and specialist scale up support at the scaling up stage. The support delivered to businesses is, is tailored to each specific company's needs and challenges. Providing a, a client centric service, the, the three main priority areas that we focus on, number one is uh, identifying innovation. The second stage is very much about sourcing funding and finance, which is, which is very important. And the third stage, the third priority areas that we, we focus on is about entering new markets. I will touch upon these three key areas um, in the following slides. Uh, next slide, please, Grace. I appreciate this is a somewhat busy slide. Uh, it gives an overview of the services with some examples of the ways in which we support businesses. When it comes to high growth services, businesses work on a one-to-one -one basis with innovation and growth specialists. There are a number of tools and programs we have access to that are available to businesses that are innovating. For example, our investment readiness program, PitchFest, provides tailored support to businesses that are seeking equity finance by helping a business further develop its value proposition, uh, look at its commercial strategy, exploring different pricing models and routes to market. Um, of course, having a, an IP review, an IP assessment, et cetera. Um, with, with this particular program concluding uh, pitching to a panel of VCs. At the bottom of, on the right hand side, our National Inquiry Gateway uh, receives a number of inquiries from businesses across the UK. Um, and these inquiries are generally filtered down to regional partners uh, and signposted to other business support organizations like the Chambers of Commerce, the Growth Hubs, et cetera. At the top of the triangle, um, specialist support is open to scale-up businesses, uh, working directly with the Scale-Up Institute a package of support is available to these identified businesses. Next slide, please. In terms of the three main uh, priority areas I mentioned, the first being identifying uh, and exploiting innovation. Um, we believe innovation should be a driving force in business, fueling the creation of new products and services to launch, ideally here within the domestic market, uh, before companies look at uh, global uh, and international trade. As part of the Innovate UK's innovation agency, uh, we are a key player in the innovation ecosystem. Our specialists on the ground can help companies to access the right resources. Um, and we have strong relationships with stakeholders, including the investor community, intellectual property office, the growth hubs, LEPs, the chambers of commerce, the universities. Understanding um, and managing IP is a critical component in nurturing innovation. And we support businesses to understand and protect their IP by identifying different types of intellectual property and protection, for example, patents, trademarks, designs, copyright, um, understanding the importance of NDAs, non-disclosure agreements, uh, when, when should companies use them, the importance of having an NDA NDA in place when speaking to external uh, partners. Um, we can provide advice on the processes to capture and review IP, including support on international IP registration and strategies. We also have an enhanced um, IP audit service provided in partnership with Intellectual Property Office. Businesses receive a detailed report that sets out clear recommendations to explore, uh, explore value from the IP um, and a plan on how they can integrate IP within their wider business strategy. 
Uh, next slide, please. The, the second uh, priority area I mentioned is surrounding accessing funding and finance. Um, research and development funding is important for companies that are developing new products, services, or, or technologies. This type of funding is particularly important for seed and early stage companies undertaking, for example, feasibility studies, uh, looking for support with regards to develop, developing prototypes, and of course, testing. The main sources of R&D funding come from government, uh, government grants, which support companies to test and de-risk ideas without the requirement for repayment. We can support businesses to identify the right R&D grant funding opportunities available, uh, including through Innovate UK, of course, um, and also how companies navigate them through the, the application process, which is a very uh, important step in ensuring that a company is including the right information when completing any applications for funding. We can also help improve um, pitching and investment readiness through our National Pitch Fest initiative. The, the second round of Pitch Fest in the Midlands is now open. The application phase uh, runs until the middle of September. Uh, giving companies around three months to prepare and submit their applications. Companies interested in, in finding out more, um, please feel free to get in contact with myself. Uh, next slide, please. Um, the third and final uh, priority area that we, we focus on in terms of supporting businesses is around internationalization, entering new markets. We offer innovative businesses several ways to build their, their knowledge of and presence in key overseas markets. Our specialists provide access to market information, including support on product com uh, compliance, conformity, uh, regulations, understanding potential routes to market, uh, and utilizing the active uh, Enterprise Europe network partners internationally, um, are, as I mentioned previously. We have a number of other initiatives to help clients um, learn about specific international markets and build business relationships supported by our, our specialists on the ground. For example, um, through the Global Incubator Program and the Global Business Innovation Program. Um, the Global Incubator Program is a, an acceleration, accelerator type program for innovative businesses to explore the potential of overseas markets. The program at, at present operates in four countries, the USA, Canada, Singapore, and India. Um, the Global Business Innovation Program, GBIPs, as they are some, sometimes referred to, uh, are being launched fairly soon and will provide an opportunity for businesses to develop new contacts and partnerships internationally. Um, finally, with regards to entering new markets, our, our B2B brokerage events help businesses that are looking to find and explore international R&D and commercial partners. Of course, given COVID, uh, many of these matchmaking events are now virtual, um, and these provide a wider opportunity for businesses to participate. Um, last slide, please. These are my, my contact details. I hope that has given a flavor of the services that Innovate UK Edge provides. Uh, slides will be circulated after this event. Please feel free to get in contact with me should you have any specific questions or require any additional support. Many thanks, Mandy. Thanks, Sunny. And I know you said that one of your slides was really busy. I've taken a photo of it, but absolutely, we will be uploading this, as I say, to YouTube and circulating the slides because there is so much on offer as support from the Innovate UK team. So it is important that we get all of that content down for everyone. And I think for me, in summary, it was more of a, if you've got an idea and you want to develop it, then you need to just come and speak to the team and they will be able to share how to do that. So there is all of that support and advice and you with your, you know, your intellectual property advice as well. I mean, that is so important because people, as Pete said, you know, they do forget this. Um, really important to do that. The, the Pitch Fest initiative as well, the funding that is out there 
And like with any of the funding that we've spoken about, you do need to have that support. Don't just go out and try to get the funding for yourself. Speak to these advisors because they know the best way and what is available to you and how to go about doing that. So please do reach out to us. That's the whole purpose of this event uh, this morning. So thank you for that, Sonny. And now, last but certainly by no means least, we have Charlotte Bowden. And Charlotte is the Account Manager for Growth and Resilience at the Greater Birmingham Solihull Local Enterprise Partnership. But again, if you're not based there, that's okay because there are other um, LEPs as well available for support. But Charlotte works with many specialist partner organisations in public and private sectors. And her aim is that to make all businesses that she works with as successful as they can be. And she's engaged in supporting growing businesses within our region and working in conjunction with partners such as ourselves. And she helps clients develop their businesses through focused support, including strategy development, sales, marketing, recruiting, and access to funding and other areas to lead to sustainable and profitable growth. And with a background in Sorry, Mandy, you're on mute. Can you hear us, Charlotte? Oh, yeah, I can hear you now, yeah. <laughs> okay, over to you then. Yeah, thank you. So, yeah, I'm, I'm, thanks for having me. I'm one of the account managers um, at the Growth Hub, and I'll, I'll be quickly just talking through um, the support that, that we offer to, to businesses. So um, we work with any business, you know, from startups to entrepreneurs to SMEs to some larger organisations um, as well. Um, and whether this is experiencing problems or cash flow issues or COVID or EU transition problems, all the way through to actually business that just want to grow as well, or they've experienced natural growth. Um, and it may be that they want to purchase new equipment, grow teams um, or just access finance itself. We have three um, teams that cover this geographical area. So we have our business advisor team who are essentially the front line um, answering business calls as they come in. And now they'll, um, they'll undertake a diagnostic with these businesses and refer them to the relevant partners and programs that will help the businesses. Um, and some of these may be the guys that have just spoken previously on this um, on this event. The account management team uh, where I sit in, we work with businesses um, more in depth and on a longer term basis. So this may be um, you know, helping create and put together business plans, look at marketing strategies, social media, um, actually help applying for funding um, and things like that. And then we have the skills and apprenticeship hub, which I'll talk later on um, on a different slide. So these are just some of the areas that actually the Growth Hub can support businesses. Um, obviously, the main two topics at the moment tend to be COVID support and the EU transition. But we can also help with grant funding um, as well. So we have worked on the, the Pivot and Prosper, Prosper Fund and the Restart grant funding as well. We do have ability to refer leadership and management programmes, working closely with the universities international trade as the guys have said before we do innovation support as Sunny's mentioned marketing and digital support we help people find new premises or relocation and then the skills and training as well this is the team um, of lovely account managers and we are um, sector specialists so we do have a manufacturing specialist food and drink specialist uh, technology, low carbon, creative, and then there's four of us that sit within a growth and resilience team as well. So it's much more um, general um, support there. These are just some of the partners um, that we work with, including the, the lovely people from today. So the university, the chambers, Department of International Trade. And this, this, we wanted to show this slide because it just kind of 
pinpoints. I think everyone likes a testimonial or a case study, um, but it just kind of gives you a summary of what our clients say about our services. Um, and one of our recent cli um, clients that we've supported, Winnie's Meals, was actually on Channel 4. And I know my colleagues um, in the business advisor team and my colleagues within the account management team have supported that business um, for, for the past kind of six to 12 months within their journey. So actually to make it then to the Channel 4 News as a West Midlands company experiencing growth was um, you know, something to be really, really proud of. Some of the external support that we help businesses access maybe um, the Aston Programme for Small Business Growth, uh, Mentoring for Growth Scheme, Focus Digital, if clients are really looking at kind of website design or something like that. Um, and our leading to grow pro program as well. Some of the grants that we're able to help businesses access and apply for. So the Business Growth Program 2 um, has been a really popular one lately. Innovate um, UK, Innovation Vouchers, again, is really popular. So if businesses are looking to have a consultant for maybe three months to help them with something they're working on within their business plan that can be used by innovation vouchers. And then something which is fairly new is the low carbon growth support pro project as well. So we can actually help businesses go through the application process and let them know if they're eligible and what it is that they need to be doing. We are, um, we are trying to put more and more events on similar to this one as part of the growth hub, which will help businesses. And we tend to listen to businesses. So one event we actually hosted yesterday was all about branding and PR because that was a topic that's um, been really popular with our um, clients of recent um, saying that actually they want support with that. So we try and try and match clients um, requests to the to the um, events that we put on. And it's really nice, actually, because we can use our clients to help host our events as well. So a couple of ones, a couple of events we have coming up. We've got some um, help to build your business through collaboration. We've got a skills recovery webinar. We've got a, a net zero business event and also how to raise your profile on LinkedIn without being pushy as well. So anyone can join these events. Um, a program that we've got running at the moment, which we are still recruiting for, is our peer networks program. So it's a, it's a national peer-to-peer -peer networking program delivered over a period of around six months. And the idea is that it helps um, leaders or directors or owners of SMEs to be in a group and a cohort with other um, similar um, directors and actually talk about business challenges and, and barriers and actually growth ambitions um, with a trained facilitator and, account, and, and an account manager. So if that is something that anyone's interested in, please do, do drop me a line and we can get you onboarded um, or feel free to, to mention that to your peer group as well. Um, finally, the skills and apprenticeship hub, so the third element of, of the growth hub. So this is a one stop shop for employers who want to develop um, their workforce. So this may be actually recruiting an apprentice or a kickstart placement. They'll take them through the whole journey of how to do that and how to access that. Or it may be upskilling their existing staff. So looking at training and qualifications that are fully funded, the skills hub will go away and do that research for the business and then find the right training providers for them as well. And even if it's not something that they're directly thinking about doing straight away, it's still great for a business to take advantage of the free analysis of their training needs of their business um, for maybe later on down their, 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 their kind of business plan and their growth. So hopefully I kind of did that quick enough um, to fit in the time. Um, but here are our contact details and the slides will be shared. So anybody who's got any questions, uh, please do get in touch. Thank you, Charlotte. No, that was really helpful and well done for keeping on track with the time there. But uh, no, it, was, it would be OK. I just think this is such valuable information. And yes, we will share it for everybody. And um, if we've got any questions and you want to just quickly put it in the chat before we draw to a close, James Blackman um, from Cocoon um, FX Media said that, you know, where are the events shown for you? So if James wants to get in touch to find out a little bit more about the events you've got going on, Charlotte, where will he uh, find that again? I've just popped our link in the chat, which is our events page. Um, so, yeah, I've just done that for you. 
Brilliant, thank you. And then, of course, at the Greater Birmingham Chambers of Commerce, we've got all of our events on our events page as well on the website. And then there's also all of the DIT events that are shared. I think the best thing is for people to get in touch with an advisor and then they can be kept fully briefed on all of the events and activity that's going on from whichever of the um, programme initiatives uh, that they're interested in. Really good to hear about the peer network, Charlotte. That sounds really interesting for people to be involved in that. And the great thing is that we are able to work together as partners. So if we find that we're working with a business that might need support from another area, then we can always refer on and make sure that that business gets the best quality of advice and support that is needed. Uh, we will upload all of this uh, to our YouTube channel as soon as we've managed to um, edit it down. And apologies that I uh, must have pressed the space bar and went on mute for a very short time. But I think um, we haven't had anything coming on the chat. I would reiterate, please do get in touch. We will um, be able to put you with the right person. But I do believe that we have said on this particular event that we will do a follow-up call, a message to each of you that have attended, just to see if there's anything further that we can do to help you. We're very grateful to all of our speakers and um, certainly from DIT and um, Innovate UK Edge and the um, GBS LEP Growth Hub. Thank you, Charlotte. And so with that, I think, Unless anyone's got any last minute uh, thoughts, I will um, close the event.